Well, security analyst David Oto joins us now for more on this. Thank you, David, for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you. Well, many in charge see Idris Deby as a hero, you know, lauded for his bravery, going to the front lines, and as a result, this time, dying for his country. What do you think about this? Do you think his death could have been avoided? President uh, uh, Idris Deby, now of late, um, had made it very clear in a video that has been circulated online, um, that it is not bravery, uh, nor courage, uh, that takes a president, a commander-in-chief, uh, to go on the front line. That it only takes somebody who wants to see the stability of his country uh, to, you know, go on the front line and make sure that the country is not destabilized as a result. He had vowed in that same video that even if it means dying in the front line, then he would do so if it is to protect the stability of Chad. And this is what, uh, you, know, has, you know, is alleged to have happened, uh, that he was killed in the front line while trying to defend the stability of Chad uh, by rebel forces uh, that came from, from Libya, calling themselves uh, the, the fact movement, you know, which is the front for change and concord in Chad. Well, we know this has always been his strategy, being on the front lines in the war against insurgents. Would you say this produced better results? Of course, as you rightly mentioned, uh, we've seen uh, President uh, uh, Idris Deby now of late um, on the front line, especially as recently as you mentioned, uh, during the Operation Boma Raf, uh, when jihadists uh, linked to the Islamic State and Boko Haram attacked some of the Chadian soldiers in the islands of Burma. He was very much on the front line and directing and commanding, you know, his forces. Now, I don't know if, you know, this is a wise move or this was a wise uh, strategy by Idris Deby, but, you know, I would certainly say it, it wasn't because it eventually uh, led to his demise, as it has been alleged. So I, I think, you know, what is important is for a commander-in-chief uh, to trust um, his commanders, uh, to make sure that his generals uh, have the ability to go on the war front and produce results rather than himself uh, going to the war front. Now, what has happened now is that the country is in chaos. Uh, so I think, you know, you know, this is, you know, was a good strategy for him at the time. But, you know, the ripple effect, you know, is not looking very good. Yeah, so just like you have mentioned, this is indeed a huge blow to the nation. But what impact do you think this would now have, the ripple effects you were talking about, and even how this, his death, reflects on the fight against insurgency in West Africa? There are two things that have happened in Chad, and we're just talking about the uh, the death of Idris Deby. What we've also seen is that there has been something that looks more or less like a coup d'etat. Um, the, the Chadian constitution clearly states that in, in the event that the president, you know, is, dies or is incapacitated, uh, it is the, um, the Speaker of the National Assembly that is supposed to take over from the president. Now, what we've seen is that the military has set up a military council and appointed the son of Idris Deby um, as the, the, the interim president, you know. So we've got the military regime in place, and that is the immediate impact, you know, of the demis of Idris Deby. And, and that will also have uh, a much ripple effect, not just on the political instability that Chad will face or that Chad is facing, but it's also going to have uh, a ripple effect on the region itself. You know, Idris Deby, as you rightly mentioned, was a strong man. He was seen as one of the bedrocks uh, that held the Sahel and also the Lake Chad Basin, um, you know, in, in some level of stability. Because remember, Chad is one of the countries that uh, was both in the G5 Sahel coalition and also in the multinational joint tax force. So the absence of Idris Deby will have a much bigger impact, especially with Libya being very unstable. So countries like Nigeria, uh, Cameroon, uh, Niger will have to really sit tight and come up with a strategy to deal 
with the instability that was coming from Chad or that you know, Chad used to cushion. Um, but, but also, I think it's important for our audience to know that whoever is going to take over from uh, Idris Deby will have a huge task uh, because he was you know, a, a very strong man and Indeed. has been there, as you rightly said, since 1990. All right, and thank you so much, David Otto, security analyst. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you.